When the alopecia first came on, I certainly noticed it there, first of all, on my chin. The most important thing for me was the scalp, because it was the most obvious thing. Um, losing the hair on my face, albeit it's not great, but it's not as important as having your head looking as it should do. Um, <clears throat> we originally discussed the possibility of having um, facial um, scalp micropigmentation about two years ago, but at that stage, it was sometimes growing back to a degree um, and then falling out, funnily enough, growing um, more in the summer and disappearing in the winter, strangely enough. Um, and I just wondered whether it was going to come back. Um, it didn't. So two years later, I've decided to go for it and have it done. A lot of people used to say when I had, you know, probably 40 or 50 patches that tend to grow into each other, you know, why don't you just get a Bic razor and shave your head, expecting that, that it would just, you just look like Kojak, but you've still got, if you've got dark hair, you'll have the same imprint of dark circles and dark marks all over your head, so nothing's going to get rid of it. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it looks awful, and it, you know, the amount of people that used to say, from a distance, oh, it looked like you've got a strange tattoo all over your head, which is, again, pretty disconcerting. So. Um, and strangely coincidental that I've ended up having effectively what is a tattoo on my head to, to disguise it. So, but, uh, and you know, for the last, I suppose it's been four years that I've had the scalp micropigmentation. Nobody's ever mentioned it unless I've brought it up and nobody can believe it when I explain what I've had done. You know, people are looking very closely. I think if you really get up close and you can tell that anybody just talking to you as, as we are now would never pick it. No one ever has. Um, everyone just, it looks fantastic. I think um, what I'm hoping for from the facial treatment is just a subtle, just something that looks like it's there. I don't want a very defined look. I'm not trying to look like I've got a five o'clock shadow, just that I haven't got kind of rosy, boyish glowing cheeks. I'd rather just have just a little bit of something. It's interesting, a good friend of mine, his daughter is probably, what's she now, eight. And she just she came up to me a couple of weeks ago and said, why haven't you got any hair on your face like my dad? Things like that. Not that it should make any difference, but um, but it'd be nice to just have something there, just subtle, but there. There wasn't much out there to see any evidence of other people having facial stubble done, so it wasn't something that I immediately jumped at. But over the course of the last, certainly the last year or so, um, I asked Simon just to send me over any any photographs or um, evidence of other people who had it done, and it looked fantastic. Um, so it didn't take long for me to decide that, um, that it was time to get it done. Um, certainly, uh, you know, obviously it's not a massive thing compared to the scalp micropigmentation, which changed my life completely. Um, it's, I suppose, um, it's more the icing on the cake just to complete the process. Um, and I'm absolutely ecstatic with the, with the look of both. You know, it looks, looks wonderful, very realistic. I like very much the way that the process was carried out in rather like the scalp micropigmentation in that I, would, I didn't want it to be too in your face. I didn't want it to be very, very obvious, to, to be subtle. Um, the first treatment was very much a framework um, just to get a kind of shape, but it was very subtle. And it, it, almost people didn't even notice there was anything there at all, unless you looked very, very closely. A couple of weeks later, to come back in, add a bit of density to it, change a few things, so it was a very relaxed approach, um, you had time to almost change your mind, which was quite nice as to what it was going to look like. And the third visit, the third and final visit, second opinions, third opinions, everybody getting involved and that's when you put the density in. Um, I'm obviously extremely happy with it. Interestingly, I haven't had any comments um, since, you know, people haven't come up to me and gone, wow, you've got stubble, because it is, it's that kind of thing that, that you know, people just think, oh, you, you, look, you look very good, you look very well. Um, which is exactly what I wanted. So, um, yeah, over the moon. Obviously, family members that know I was going to get done, and my wife think you know they think it looks absolutely wonderful. It's exactly what I wanted. They knew exactly what I wanted. Um, so yeah, it's um, I'm just extremely happy with the whole process. Yeah. So it's um, obviously it moves around. So and interestingly, on the on the scalp, I've noticed over the course of the last five or six months, for what you know, for I don't know quite for what reason. Um, because I clip her every two to three days, that there are some new patches have appeared and other ones that had appeared have, have disappeared. But it doesn't matter because nobody can see it because it's covered the whole scalp. And the same with the face, it, you know, it comes and goes. I've got some here at the minute, 
during the course of the winter, for whatever reason, um, it tends to pretty much disappear. So again, it doesn't matter anymore. You know? it, it takes the stress out of it all. Because sometimes I can be left with just a little bit of hair there. It looks a bit odd. And now it doesn't make any difference whatsoever, which is great. So, no, brilliant.